What if I told you that fewer than 1% of humans carry a genetic combination so rare that it holds clues to some of humanity's greatest migrations, evolutionary adaptations, and the very origins of human diversity, red hair and blue eyes? You've seen this combination, maybe you are this combination. But what you might not know is the remarkable scientific story hidden in those genes. A story that traces back to ancient human populations, involves evolutionary adaptations to harsh northern climates, and reveals how human migration patterns shaped the genetic diversity we see today. By the end of this video, you'll understand the real evolutionary forces that created this rare combination, why it clusters in specific populations, and what modern genetics reveals about our shared human heritage. But first, we need to understand why rarity itself can be an evolutionary advantage. Here's a question that reveals something profound about human evolution. How can genetic traits that seem disadvantageous not only survive, but thrive in specific populations? Red hair occurs in roughly 1 to 2% of the global population. Blue eyes in about 8 to 10%. When you combine them mathematically, you'd expect about 0.17% of people to have both traits. That's roughly 13 million people worldwide. But here's what makes this scientifically fascinating. This combination isn't randomly distributed. It clusters dramatically in specific regions, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and parts of Scandinavia. In some Irish populations, this combination appears in up to 4% of residents. This clustering tells us something important about human migration and population genetics. It suggests founder effects, population bottlenecks, and the role of geographic isolation in preserving rare genetic variants. From an evolutionary perspective, both red hair and blue eyes present interesting puzzles. Red hair is associated with fair skin that burns easily, seemingly disadvantageous in many environments. Blue eyes offer no clear survival benefit over brown eyes in most climates. So why do these traits persist? The answer lies in understanding how evolution works in small, isolated populations, and how genetic drift can preserve traits that might disappear in larger gene pools. But to understand the full picture, we need to examine each trait individually, starting with the fascinating genetics behind red hair. Did you know that red hair represents one of the most well-studied examples of human genetic diversity? With over 200 different mutations identified in a single gene, red hair results from mutations in the MC1R gene, the melanocortin-1 receptor. This gene normally helps produce dark pigment and emelanin in hair and skin. When MC1R mutations occur, the body produces morpheomelanin instead, creating the red and orange tones we associate with red hair. What's remarkable is the diversity of these mutations. Researchers have identified over 200 different variants of MC1R, with different combinations, producing everything from auburn to bright copper red hair. Here's where it gets really interesting from an evolutionary perspective. Some MC1R variants are ancient. Population genetic studies suggest that some red hair mutations existed in European populations for tens of thousands of years. In 27, researchers made a fascinating discovery when analyzing Neanderthal DNA. They found that some Neanderthal populations also carried MC1R mutations that likely produced red hair, but these were different mutations from the ones found in modern humans. This represents convergent evolution, two different human lineages independently evolving similar traits, likely in response to similar environmental pressures. But what were those pressures? The leading scientific hypothesis involves vitamin D synthesis. In the low-light environments of Northern Europe, lighter skin helps the body produce vitamin D more efficiently. The MC1R mutations that cause red hair also tend to produce very fair skin. This creates what geneticists call a balancing selection. The trait has both costs increased UV sensitivity and benefits better vitamin D production in low light environments. But red hair is only half of our genetic story. To understand the complete picture, 
we need to examine the origins of blue eyes. Imagine if every blue-eyed person on Earth, from Scandinavia to Afghanistan, to the scattered populations of North Africa, could trace their eye color back to a single ancestor who lived around 8,000 years ago. That's exactly what genetic research has revealed. Unlike red hair, which evolved multiple times independently, blue eyes have a single evolutionary origin. The mutation occurred in the OCA2 and HERC2 gene complex, likely somewhere in the region around the Black Sea. This wasn't the creation of blue pigment, it was the reduction of brown pigment. Blue eyes are essentially the result of decreased melanin production in the iris. The Rayleigh scattering effect, the same physics that makes the sky appear blue, creates the blue appearance when light interacts with the low melanin iris structure. What makes this scientifically remarkable is how quickly this mutation spread. In evolutionary terms, going from a single mutation to 8 to 10% of European populations in just 8,000 years represents extremely rapid genetic change. Ancient DNA studies have revealed fascinating details about this process. The 7,000-year-old La Braña I skeleton from Spain showed that early blue-eyed Europeans had dark skin. The pale skin we associate with blue eyes evolved separately and later. This suggests that the original selective pressure for blue eyes was independent of skin color adaptations. Some researchers hypothesize that in small, founding populations, rare traits like blue eyes might have been sexually selected unusual features standing out in limited mate pools. But the real scientific mystery isn't how blue eyes evolved, it's how they spread so rapidly across such a wide geographic area in such a short evolutionary time span. The answer involves some of the most dramatic population movements in human history. What happens when two independently rare genetic traits encounter each other in the same populations? The result is a masterclass in population genetics. The red hair plus blue eyes combination reaches its highest frequencies in Celtic populations, particularly in Ireland and Scotland. This isn't coincidence, it's the result of specific historical and genetic factors. Both traits are recessive, meaning you need two copies of the relevant mutations to express the trait. In large diverse populations, recessive traits tend to be rare. But in smaller, more isolated populations like island communities or geographically isolated groups, recessive traits can reach much higher frequencies. This is called the founder effect. When small groups of people establish new populations, they carry only a fraction of the genetic diversity from their source population. If those founders happen to carry rare recessive alleles, those alleles can become much more common in the new population. Celtic populations experienced several founder effects throughout history. Initial settlements of Ireland and Scotland involved relatively small groups. Later, population bottlenecks caused by factors like the medieval climate anomaly, famines and diseases further concentrated certain genetic variants. The combination of red hair and blue eyes in these populations also demonstrates something called linkage disequilibrium. When genes that are physically close together on chromosomes tend to be inherited together, even though they control different traits. But here's what's really fascinating from a cultural perspective. How different societies responded to physical traits they encountered rarely. Many cultures developed folklore around unusual physical appearances, not because they were supernatural, but because human societies often create stories to explain things that are statistically uncommon. The Celtic traditions around red hair, the Norse descriptions of unusual appearances, and similar folklore from other cultures reflect a common human tendency, turning the statistically rare into the culturally significant. But understanding the real history requires separating folklore from historical fact. One of the most persistent myths about red hair involves the European witch trials. But what does the historical evidence actually show? The witch trial period in Europe roughly 1450 to 1750, resulted in an estimated 40 to 80,000 executions. But contrary to popular belief, 
systematic analysis of trial records shows that accusations weren't primarily based on physical appearance. Historians like Brian Levack and Robin Briggs have extensively analyzed trial records. The most common factors in accusations were social conflicts, economic disputes, unusual behavior during community crises, and accusations by neighbors, not specific physical traits. The association between red hair and witchcraft in popular culture largely comes from much later literary sources and 19th century romanticism, not contemporaneous historical documents. This is important because it illustrates how genetic frequencies actually work. If societies had systematically eliminated people with specific genetic traits, we would see clear genetic bottlenecks in the historical record. Population genetics shows no such bottlenecks for red hair or blue eyes during this period. What we do see is the normal effect of population dynamics. Migration, intermarriage, and genetic drift gradually changing allele frequencies over time. The persistence of red hair plus blue eyes in Celtic populations is better explained by geographic isolation, cultural practices around marriage within communities, and the simple mathematics of recessive inheritance in small populations. But there's still a genuine scientific mystery here. Why do some genetic combinations persist when others disappear? The answer involves some cutting-edge research in evolutionary genetics. Recent studies suggest that seemingly disadvantageous traits might persist because they're linked to other genes that provide benefits or because they offer advantages in specific environmental conditions that aren't immediately obvious. This brings us to what modern science actually reveals about genetic diversity and human adaptation. Here's what's genuinely remarkable about the red hair plus blue eyes combination. It represents a perfect case study in how human genetic diversity actually works. Recent genome-wide association studies have revealed that the genes involved in pigmentation are connected to much larger genetic networks. MC1R variants, for example, don't just affect hair color. They influence immune system function, pain perception, and vitamin D metabolism. This helps explain why seemingly disadvantageous traits persist. The same genetic variants that produce red hair and fair skin also influence how the body responds to pathogens, processes certain vitamins, and reacts to different medications. People with red hair do show measurably different responses to certain anesthetics and pain medications, not because of anything mystical, but because MC1R variants affect how certain neurotransmitter systems function. Blue eyes, similarly, are associated with slightly different light sensitivity patterns, though these differences are subtle and well within normal human variation. What's scientifically exciting is how these findings illustrate the complexity of human genetics. Traits that appear to be simple cosmetic differences often involve complex genetic networks that affect multiple body systems. This complexity helps explain why human populations maintain such remarkable genetic diversity. Traits that might seem neutral or even disadvantageous in one context can provide advantages in others. From a population genetics perspective, the red hair plus blue eyes combination also demonstrates how genetic drift works in real human populations. In large populations, rare recessive traits tend to disappear. In smaller, more isolated populations, they can persist or even become common through chance alone. This isn't just academic. Understanding these processes helps us comprehend how human populations adapted to different environments throughout history and how genetic diversity is maintained in modern populations. But perhaps the most important lesson is about the value of genetic diversity itself. So what should we take away from this exploration of rare genetic combinations? The story of red hair and blue eyes is fundamentally a story about the importance of genetic diversity in human populations. These traits persist not because they're mystical or supernatural, but because they're part of the complex genetic heritage that has helped humans adapt to diverse environments across the globe. Every rare genetic combination, whether it's red hair and blue eyes, the ability to digest lactose as an adult, resistance to certain diseases, 
or adaptations to high altitude, represents millions of years of evolutionary experimentation. As human populations become increasingly mobile and intermixed, some rare genetic combinations will indeed become rarer. This is a natural process, but it also means we're losing some of the genetic diversity that took millennia to accumulate. From a scientific perspective, studying rare traits, like the red hair plus blue eyes combination, helps us understand fundamental principles of genetics, evolution, and human history that apply to all human populations. These studies contribute to medical genetics, help us understand population movements throughout history, and reveal the complex factors that maintain genetic diversity in human populations. Now before we wrap up, I want to ask you something important. Do you have red hair and blue eyes? Or do you know someone who does? Have you ever wondered about your own genetic story? Please leave a comment below and share your family's unique genetic combinations. Your stories could inspire our next deep dive into human genetics. If this exploration of the science behind human diversity fascinated you, please hit that subscribe button right now and turn on notifications. We're building a community of curious minds who want to understand the real science behind what makes us human. And here's how you can help spread accurate scientific information. Share this video with anyone who's curious about genetics, evolution, or human diversity. When you share evidence-based content like this, you're helping combat misinformation and promoting genuine scientific understanding. The next time you see someone with red hair and blue eyes, you're looking at a living example of how genetics, evolution, and human history intersect a reminder that the diversity we see in human populations reflects thousands of years of adaptation, migration, and the fundamental processes that shape all life on Earth. The real wonder isn't in manufactured mysteries, it's in understanding the genuine scientific processes that created the remarkable diversity of human life we see around us. Thanks for watching.